Keyboards usually have their keys arranged in a matrix. Why is it so? How does that work? And what can go wrong? To connect the key to a controller, you can simply have the key close to ground, use a pull-up resistor to have a high level when the key is not closed, and you have a simple way to connect a few keys to a controller. But when you have more than a few keys, it gets complicated. Like in this example, if you have 20 keys, you need 20 inputs on your controller. And a typical desktop keyboard has more than 100 keys. So that gets quite complicated and expensive. It's much more efficient to arrange the keys in a matrix where the key resides at the cross point between a X and a Y line. This reduces the number of uh, pins required to read the matrix. As you can see here, already with six keys in a 2x3 matrix, you need only five pins versus the six pins for a direct connection. And when you go for a typical uh, matrix size like 16x8, you can serve 128 keys with only 24 pins. So how does reading the matrix work? The Y lines are pulled to low one by one, and when they're not pulled to low, they're floating, they have no voltage on them. The X lines are pulled high in the idle state, and the keys are on the cross points between the X and the Y lines. So in this example, we have no key pressed. The Y line is pulled low, all the X lines remain high since there's no connection between Y and X lines. Same is for the Y1 line and the Y2 line, so the controller knows currently there is no key pressed. Now we have the situation where one key is pressed. Y0 is pulled low, since there is no key closed on that line, there is still no reaction, all of the X lines remain high. Then the Y line, Y1 line, line is pulled low, and we have a key pressed on the coordinate X1, Y1, and subsequently the X1 line is pulled low and the controller now sees that there is an active key. On Y2, again, there is no key pressed, so no reaction. When we have more than one key pressed, that still works. On Y0, there is still no key active, so we get high levels on all of the X lines. On Y1, there is one key pressed, that is on the coordinate x1, y1, so we get a reaction on the x1 line, which gets pulled low. On y2, there's another key pressed, and we get a reaction on the line x0, so the controller knows that also the key on x0, y2, is currently active. If three or more keys are pressed at the same time, we might get into trouble. We can have a situation where a so-called phantom key is generated. A key that is physically not pressed, but the controller sees it at be, as being pressed and it cannot tell whether it's really pressed or not. In this example here, when the Y0 line is pulled low, the X1 line gets pulled low through the key on the coordinate X1, Y0, which in turn pulls down the Y2 line, because there is a key on uh, X1, Y2, which is closed, and the switch on the coordinate X0, Y2, also pulls down the X0 line. So for the controller, it appears like on the Y0 line, the uh, keys on the positions X0 and X1 are both pressed and it cannot tell that apart from the actual situation where both of these keys are pressed. On the Y1 line we have no active key, so there is no problem. And on the Y2 line we still can tell whether the keys are actually pressed, but in this case it gives us the correct, uh, correct status of the matrix. But we still can tell which of these four keys are actually pressed. If all four of them are pressed, 
or only three of them are pressed and which ones they are. This problem always arises when you have a configuration where the pressed keys are forming the three corners of a rectangle in the matrix, then the fourth corner of the rectangle also appears to be pressed and there is no way to tell that apart. So what can we do to prevent these phantom keys? The most effective method is to put a diode at each of the keys. In this example here, when the Y0 line is pulled low, only the X1 line gets pulled low since the key at the coordinate X1, Y2 is now blocked by the diode, so it cannot pull the Y2 line low. So we get the correct result of just X1, uh, Y0 being pressed at the moment. On the Y1 line, no key is pressed, no problem. On the Y2 line, actually two keys are pressed and they are properly reported. So with the diodes, we get rid of the phantom keys in a very effective way. We can press any combination of keys that we want and the controller will be able to actually tell which of the keys are really pressed. Not many applications require that you can press any arbitrary combination of keys in the matrix. And it's also a cost factor to put diodes at each and every key in the matrix. And some of the technologies for building a key matrix do even prohibit to integrate diodes into the matrix. So another option to avoid phantom keys is to rearrange the keys in a way that the necessary combinations of keys never form a rectangle in the matrix. Here's an example. When Y0 is pulled low, we get the proper result that the key on X2, Y0 is pressed. No interference with other keys. On Y1, the same thing, we get the proper result as on Y2. To be able to rearrange the keys in that way, of course you need a sufficiently big matrix. And you're really lucky if you're using one of our KeyWarrior 100 chips, which support a matrix size of 24 by 16, so you can always avoid phantom keys. Thank you.